Good afternoon all. Today I'm going to make a bigger battery pack using the Vruzend 1.6 system. I'm going to make a 4S 2P, so four cells in series, two in parallel, so that's eight cells in total. Here are the first two and I've pushed the uh, positive end of this one and I've been fettling these um, ends where I've got the little welded studs been using my new Plato Model 170 pliers which can cut flush to just sort of nibble away at any stuff that's on there and I'm getting them quite flat. So positive end of my uh, Samsung 13Q cell 1.3 amp hours into the red holder and uh, negative end of this one into the blue. Slide those together and now what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to join these together so that they kind of behave as one uh, module, as it were. So just do the nuts on this nickel strip. These nickel strips do seem to flake quite a bit. The nickel plating, I think, is coming away. Uh, <laughs> try and get that on there. It's slightly tricky to get it straight. And then just do it up uh, finger tight with my... 5.5 millimeter nut spinner just finger tight on there so now that behaves as one element and now I'm going to push this onto the other side so I've got my positive which is red and on this side I've got my dovetails to the top and to the right so let's push those on um, but they don't stay where you put them they spring back because the springs in here are fairly tough but that module um, is now, well, modular. And if you build lots of modules like this, you can simply slide the things together and build up bigger packs. Now, one thing I learned when I made the battery last time is that putting dovetails opposite dovetails <laughs> is a bad idea. In fact, on one end of the cell, you want one of the connector types, like this is the dovetail, and directly opposite, you want the exact opposite. So here, dovetail... Uh, no, that's slightly wrong, isn't it? Because I've got a dovetail opposite a dovetail. Oh, I'm going to have to take that back off. Yes, yeah, so after playing around with these things for a while, you start to get your head around how you need to position the dovetails and the slots uh, in order to make this truly modular. So I'm going for, at the front, I'm going for top and right for the dovetails. And then opposite the dovetails, I want the slots and that's um, the case in all aspects of this cell. So every time there's a slot on this side, there's a dovetail on that side. And we'll see that why that's important in a moment. But let's get this nickel strip back on there and these two nuts. So there's my basic module. I've got a strip across the back that holds this together. And in true Blue Peter style, here are some more that I made earlier. And they all conform to the same orientation. I've got my front dovetails top and right and in total I've got four of these and you can see they've all got their strips attached on the back. Now this is where this becomes quite fun because this becomes completely modular and I can show you now why you need to have um, slots opposite dovetails and that's because this dovetail now slides into those slots and uh, this dovetail slides into these slots and it happens simultaneously. So if I can get that into the right place, they just slide together. So this is my 4S. This is my four cells in series. You can see that these two are hooked up. So on this side, it's fairly obvious we'll need one across the middle and then that'll be my positive and that'll be my negative. But I'm not actually going to do the four cells in series to start with, I'm actually going to put this module on top of this module and create a group of four. Just has to get all that stuff lined up. So now you can see that this is a 2S 2P, P because these are the same colour, so I'm going to parallel across there. And here are my two cells in series. Now let's make another one of these by sliding these two on top of each other like that. And then, and this is why it's important to have the dovetails opposite the slots, I can now work with these in blocks of four and slide those 
onto there. And that is my finished configuration for 4S, four sales in series across here, 2P, parallel, 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 parallel. But before I start putting the nickel strips on, I want to get my barrel bolts in. So I'm just going to slide these back apart again. And I'm going to work with these modules, these square modules, uh, to put these barrel bolts in because it's the easiest way to work. So let's take a barrel bolt. Uh, my bolt in the end of this sort of tube is uh, about three or four turns out. Put that in the hole at the end and slide that in. Make sure these are pushed together. That comes up the other side. And then I'll put the bolt in that side. I seem to have lost the light now. And I'm just going to do that up with my little screwdriver to start with, just so that it sits on the, the little shelf on these. Now the problem now is when I turn that, the other side turns. And so I can't do it up unless I can hold that bolt uh, and stop it from turning. So what I've come up with is I'll just get that parallel like so. And then I modified this saw blade, which is a broken saw blade. I just cut a little slot out of there and that fits very neatly across that bolt. And so if I just, and it sits within these little pillars, so it's quite snug in there. If I just hold that, I can stop that bolt rotating and I can now, using a much more chunky screwdriver, put a few turns on this to start tightening the end caps onto the cells. And I've kind of got used to doing about eight half turns. And that pulls these caps in probably about two millimeters at each end. I can take that off now. And that bolt was held during that whole process. And now you should be able to see that the ones that I've tightened up with the barrel bolts, it's uh, a smaller uh, dimension across there. We could measure that dimension to get all of these consistent, but I'm just doing eight half turns. That seems to be good enough. So I'll just prepare another barrel bolt. Okay, that's very tight in that end. I don't know why, but so let's push that into this one. And then I'll just do exactly the same thing again. Just loose tighten this with my little screwdriver because it's got a bit more feel to it. So I can see when that sits down on that shelf and the other end just rotates. So I'll line that up so that it's square. Put on my little jig to stop that turning. Hold that in the palm of my hand. Yes, a little bit toothy, but it's okay. And do my one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I'm not sure whether these are half turns, but see if those roughly match. Yes, they kind of match. So they're pushed in about the same amount. So these are now all held together with barrel bolts. I know that my connections in the end caps are good. And now I can slide these two blocks together like that. And that's my completed, without the connections of course, uh, 4S 2P battery pack ready to have the uh, connections made. So I think I'm going to start by uh, putting the straps across these middle two, um, which is uh, the opposite of these going across the end two. So that's not going to connect any cell to anything that's going to cause a problem. But at the same time as putting these across the middle here, I'm also going to make the first parallel connection by putting strips across this way as well. And that doesn't connect any battery to any battery either. So let's get those on with four nuts. Getting these nuts on is a little bit fiddly, but the nut spinner kind of gets the threads to get started. Okay, more nuts. And I'll just tighten these up finger tight with this nut spinner so that I don't over tighten these because they're quite small threads. And okay, so that's my midpoint connection between cells two and three and my parallel connections there. Now I can make parallel connections here, 
But before I do, I'm just going to get my DVM to check whether the voltages of these cells are roughly the same. Right, so on the far side, we've got, well, it's negative, but that doesn't matter, 7.86. And on this side, 7.88. In fact, it's virtually the same. So there's going to be no problem in putting my parallel straps across there now because all the cells are approximately the same voltage. So I'll just take these four nuts off so I can put my parallel straps on. Now, we've got to be a little bit careful here. One thing I absolutely definitely do not want to do is strap across that gap because we're strapped across that gap on the other side. So that would go bang but we're okay strapping across here and strapping across here for my parallel connections. And I'm going to take these four nuts off as well and make another parallel connection across there. So I've just got the maximum current handling parallel connections made. These nuts are really very fiddly, but the nut spinner helps you get them on. Nothing's exploded yet. So this is all one connection because it's all one piece of metal. So clearly nothing untoward is going to happen if I strap across there because it's already connected. Oh, I need some more straps. And the same is true over here. That's already all one connection. So there's no problem adding that on. So these are my parallel links. These are my series connections going across this way. And on the other side, of course, they're all in the middle leaving these two endpoints, and I'll check the voltages of these before I strap them. But let's get these nuts on now. Oh, that strap fell off. Okay, that's that one, isn't it? Mustn't go across the middle there. So just do these up finger tight, check that they're all done up. No, those are loose. Just so that they can handle the current. I'm not going to draw a huge current from them, but I just want them reasonably well done up. Okay, so on the other side, that square of four strips is in the middle. Now I need to uh, strap across there and across there. But once again, I'm just going to bring the DVM in and check the voltages there. I can't imagine there's going to be... Uh, actually, of course, we're looking for... If I do it like this, we're really looking for zero volts, aren't we? Um, because we've got plus of a cell voltage and then minus it again. So doing it this way, I'm just looking for really next to nothing. Well, that's next to nothing. What about this one? Uh, two millivolts is that? I think that's really nothing at all. I can't see the display on the meter very well. Yeah, three millivolts. So that's fine. I can put my straps across there. Now, because I've got straps, the series straps on this side going uh, across these two, I definitely don't want to go across there, but it's fine to go pause to pause on my most positive end of my battery, neg to neg on my most negative end, and put some nuts on. Now, this is also the point where you could put these um, wire connector strips on, so I could add that on there, or not have that one and have this one. But I don't think I'm going to do that because I'm going to have wires from my pack ends, which are these two points, to the BMS. And these are a bit impractical for the BMS. So I'll probably just use ring terminals for that. So I don't think I'm going to use those for the moment. So just a final tightening of these straps. And then I can test my pack with a load. I'll just use that light bulb again. So there are my uh, connections between cells one and two and between cells three and four. There are my connections between cells two and three, and here are my outside terminals. Let's get my light bulb cluster. Here it is. And uh, now this needs to go across the whole pack because my four cells in series are in a linear string. So oh, I've got my <laughs> black and red the wrong, wrong around. It doesn't really matter, does it? So let's put that on there. And yes, if I can get these on to stay on, my lamps come on. And I got twice the current delivery capability because my pack is two in parallel. So let's have a quick look at this BMS. This was very cheap. I think it was $1.75.
or something like that. It looks pretty small to me. Yet yeah, there's not much to that, is there? Let's have a closer look. So this is quite nicely laid out. We've got uh, the most positive end of the battery there, uh, which is, I suppose, positive of battery four, positive of battery three, pos bat two, pos of battery one, and overall battery negative, which is the negative side of battery one. These are my pack connections, pack negative, pack positive. And you can see that between pack negative and battery negative, there are a couple of low value resistors. So as we start drawing current, a small voltage will appear across there. There are little solder balls on here, aren't they? Just get them to run away. Um, we've got some MOSFETs here. Two of them in parallel are going to be the charge MOSFET. Um, now there's an intermediate stage there, but the connection between battery positive and pack positive looks like it goes through both sets of these but they're probably source to source or drain to drain. I think they might be drain to drain if, I think it's drain where the four connections are. I will have to check that. And we've also got a controller chip. Can't see the number on that just at the moment. Let's have an even closer look. Well, it's very difficult to get that in the light, but it's an 8254AA chip. So I'll see if I can get some data on that. Well, the data sheet is this, the S8254 series, uh, three serial or four serial cell pack protection IC. Now it doesn't do balancing, it only does protection. So that's uh, over discharge, overcharge and overcurrent. But in the table of codes, none of these tie up with, that, with what is actually printed on here. <laughs> so I don't know whether this is a clone or a copy or something, but um, we can't really look at this chart to see what the uh, discharge detection voltage, release voltage, over discharge detection voltage and release voltage um, are and the overcurrent detection voltage is. So we're probably going to have to sort of characterize this thing uh, myself just by charging it up and seeing at what point it um, cuts out, cuts in and all that sort of stuff. I think it should fit like that because the most positive connection will come up to here. My most positive connection on my pack. Uh, this point here will then have to go across to uh, this point. Yes, that's right. This B2 positive is the center point, which can go to this little cluster. This one across to there. And then this one is my overall battery negative. My pack connections then will be there. I'll just uh, break that uh, little thing off. So that can probably be hot glued on there. Now I'm not going to do this right now. I'll leave that for another video, um, certainly because um, charging it, discharging it, uh, testing the cut in and cut out voltages is something that's going to take a bit longer. But what I am going to do is open another package because this device doesn't do cell balancing, but I've bought another one of those cell balancers and this time it's a 4S balancer. And this is it. It's probably going to look very similar to the three cell balancer, which I had last time. Yep, very similar. Uh, this time it's got three modules so that it can transfer uh, between cells. Uh, well, these sit between the cells. So this one will do, uh, well, you can see it from the lights, probably easier. There's a module between cells one and two, between cells two and three, and between cells three and four. We've got a five uh, wire cable this time, because as you can see from this, we've got five points. So if I put the BMS on here and the cell balancer, then we've kind of got everything we need to both protect and keep this pack in balance. But as I say, that can uh, be done another time. So it's pretty straightforward putting uh, together one of these uh, packs. This one 4S 2P, four cells in series in, uh, where does it start? Yeah, there in uh, that configuration and two in parallel using this Vruzend uh, system. Now, if these are rated for five amps each, then by strapping two together in parallel, I should theoretically be able to draw 10 amps. This is actually a 20 amp BMS, so it'd probably be pushing it a bit to try and uh, get this thing to do an overcurrent cutout. So I probably won't do that. But of course I can keep adding to this pack and build it out to a, um, a 4P, pack and then perhaps we can test the uh, overcurrent cutout. But 
for the moment I just wanted to get this packed together which I've done so that's kind of it for this video cheerio